everyone, welcome for this new lesson. Today we'll be looking into two new Deplier verbs. It will be group by to learn how to group our variables, as well as summarize to obtain summary statistics. Let's go! Welcome to this lesson. Here are our learning objectives for today. It means we'll know how to use in and out the verbs group by and summarize by the end. And we'll come back to these different learning objectives at the end of our lesson. Let's start by loading our data. So we will be using today mainly the Yaoundé COVID-19 data set. We'll be selecting a bunch of the variables of interest. So let's make our Yao subset. There we go. So we have a subset, our classical 971 data entries, and uh, this time we are keeping 15 variables. And we'll start this lesson off by a small recap as to what is exactly a summary statistic. Well, a summary statistic is when you have a sequence of values, such as, for example, one of our variables, like age, and that you summarize it into a single value, such as the mean. So you have many different kinds of ways of summarizing into a single value, it can be either the, so the counts, it can be the position, so first, last, nth. It can be the center, so whether it's the mean or the median of your sequence of values. It can be the spread, so the standard deviation or the interquantile range. And then it can also be different elements of the sequence of values in a, diff in a specific range, such as the minimum, the maximum, the quantiles. So the idea is to really capture an aspect of the sequence of values by summarizing it into a single value. So, why does this matter? Well, because this summarizing is one of the most informative manners of doing data analysis, and so in your data wrangling, you will often be asked or required to summarize variables. So that is one really important reason that you should become fluent in computing them. And for this, you'll see that there's no better tool than the summarize function that we are going to see. So introducing summarize. To kind of reinforce why summarize is so beautiful, we'll actually start by computing summary statistics without using summarize. And then we'll see why we should use it. So let's see how we're going to find the mean age of the respondents in the Yao data frame. So we're going to create a vector called Yao age, which is going to be just the age years variable, which we're extracting using here the dollar sign. And then we're going to go see the first elements of Yao age. Go here we have extracted the vector Yao age and we're seeing its first six elements. Now, let's say that we want to get the mean of this vector. Well, we could do something like mean yao age. And there we go. We have the mean of the age of the respondents over our entire yao subset. So it's extremely easy. So we might wonder why we want to use summarize. Well, let's first introduce how you would write, in, write it with summarize. You would write yao, then you would write mean age is equal to the mean of age years. There we go. We run it. And we now see that we get the same value as above. We get the same value using summarize than as doing it classically. The syntax as I have just typed out, is quite simple, where you put your data frame, you pipe summarize, you define the new column name, and then here you input your summary function and the column, so the variable, that you want to apply it to. You can also compute multiple summary statistics. So let's compute the mean and the median of our age variable to see if they are the same. It's very similar. Mean, age, years. And then the median age will be defined with the median function, which we know. Let's run this. Nice and simple, super easy. This is where we see that we have a difference between the mean and the median of our age distribution. So always something good to keep in mind when doing further statistics. And we have gotten this very nice summary 
of our age variable with two lines of code and the summarize verb. But the moment where summarize becomes really essential and where you'll be happy you have this verb is when you're going to be working on grouped summaries. So when you're going to group your variables together and you're going to want to have your summary statistics by groups. We're going to get to what groups and summarizing over groups means in just a second. But first, it's time for you to have your first practice question about summarize. So you're going to use summarize and the relevant summary functions to obtain the mean, the median, and the standard deviation of the weights of the respondents of the Yao data frame. So your data frame output that you'll be submitting in this question should look something like this. So it should have the mean weight kilogram, median weight kilogram, and the SD, so standard deviation, weight kilogram. I will let you have a go, and then you can try the second practice question, which is use summarize and the relevant summary functions to obtain the minimum and the maximum, so this is a different kind of summarizing over your variable, of the respondent's heights. So basically the tallest and shortest person. I will see you back here in a second after you've done these two questions. Welcome back. I hope that your first usage of summarize was a success. Now, let's get into these grouped summaries and how we are going to use summarize with group by. So I mentioned this notion of making your data into groups. What does it mean making your grouping your data? Well, a simple example is going to be males versus females. So these are two groups. They're both in your sex or gender variable, but within the same variable, you have two distinct groups. So two distinct categories, if you will. Let's group by, and then let's see how group by does the job of splitting operations by group. All right. So we're going to group by the sex variable of Yao. And you see that nothing happens. Our table is still the same size. However, you see that here we have an additional little box that has appeared, which tells us that our groups are by sex and that there are two groups. But there is a change in the way it is perceived as a data frame. Now it is a grouped data frame. If you're working more in the console, you'll see something like this appear. And now let's see the power of it. Let's group by sex and let's get the mean. My apologies, let's get the mean age by sex. So we're going to do the mean age years and we're so the same thing as we just did before, but this time we're doing it by group. This is our difference and in this lies the power of putting these two together. It is that now we keep the sex variable and you have a mean and a median which is for each gender. So the mean age of women is 29.49, so the median age is 26. And for males, it's a bit older, well, it's, bit, it's a bit younger, my bad, it's 28.39, with a median age of 25. And this is how you start getting descriptive statistics by group. And a lot of the data analysis that you will have to do implies getting this. So it's very important to know and to be familiar with this. Let's see another example of this. So now we're going to group by neighborhoods and we are going to summarize to get the min and the max weight of the population by neighborhood. So the mean weight is equal to min weight kilogram and then the max weight is equal to max weight kilogram. So now when we run this, we see that we are getting a minimal and maximal weight per neighborhood. So this is really giving us more geographical relevant information rather than, rather than just having the minimum weight and the maximum weight over our entire data set. Let's see one more example for good measure. We 
are going to be using um, a variable you haven't seen yet, so we'll take a small look at it before we dive in. It's called n days miss work, which tells us the number of days that a respondent missed work because of a COVID-19 like um, phase where he had COVID-19 like symptoms. So if we just have a quick look at it before we manipulate it, miss work, there we go. We see that we have one variable with numerical values or NA values. And now let's see if we can summarize this variable. So once again, we're going to do it by gender and we're gonna have a sum of all days missed by gender. So we're going to sum over N days miss work. And when we run this, well, oopsie, we see that we get actually NA values as there are NA values in our column. So here you can add a little NA remove equals true within sum to get what you actually want, which is the total days missed per female and male. By adding this NA remove true, you're basically going to tell your, your summarizing operation to disregard the NA entries. So next practice question. I'm going to ask you to use group by and summarize to obtain the mean weight by smoking status in the Yao data frame. And then for the second practice question, you'll be using group by and summarize for the, and the relevant summary function to obtain the minimum and maximum heights of each sex in the Yao data frame. And then we even have a third practice question where you're going to use group by, summarize and sum and calculate the total number of bedridden days. So this is a variable you also haven't seen yet called n bedridden days, which is reported by the respondents of each sex. So your template data frame is this and you will submit it here. So I hope you're not too tired after those three practice questions. I hope that they went well, that you're starting to feel familiar with using group by and summarize. Summarize. <laughs> I had an interesting pronunciation there. And for an, our next part. So our next part is going to be even further intricate usage of group by because we're going to see group by multiple variables. So in other words, it's also called nested grouping. The idea is that you're not only going to group by sex or by age, you're also going to group by more than one variable, so potentially by both of these. So we're going to give an example right away by grouping both by men and women in each neighborhood. So this means that we'll be grouping by sex and by neighborhood to calculate the mean age. So it looks something like this. We have grouped by two variables now. So this is a nested grouping. And now we're going to summarize to get the mean age of each of the groups that can be created by the different combinations of these variables. So there you go. You see that now we have our first entries here, which are for all the female patient respondents of the study per neighborhood. And afterwards, if we go further in our data frame, we have all the male replies for the different neighborhoods and as well as their mean age. So we're getting now a visual which is not only geographical but which is also gendered. So we're really getting to levels of information that is getting more and more precise inside our data frame. So for once we won't be having a part which is about order and how order matters because it does not. Um, it's the same thing to put neighborhood before sex or sex before neighborhood. The only thing that is going to change is uh, the presentation inside the data frame. So giving you a quick example of what this looks like. If we put neighborhood before sex, then just we are going to have first variable to be the neighborhood. And we'll see now that for the Bricketry neighborhood, the female mean is Low, the female mean age is lower than the male mean age, and so on and so forth. So maybe if your main focus 
is the neighborhoods and then the gender, then this is a better organization because it's easier to see in each neighborhood who, has, uh, who is older between the two different genders. But truly, it really depends how you want to look at it. So perfect, practice again. Yes, there's a lot of practice in this lesson. So now, you'll be using the Yao data frame and you're going to group it by gender and by treatments. And you're going to be then using summarize to extract the summary of the mean of the weight. Then so your second practice question will be to group by age category in the variable age category three, gender and IgG results. And to then summarize to calculate the mean of the bedridden days. All right, I will meet you here after those two questions. Welcome back. After seeing so much about grouping, it's essential that we talk actually about ungrouping. There's a special verb in, dip, in Diplaya, which is ungroup, and which you should use, because until you use it, your data is still grouped. It can have a lot of unwanted downstream effects. You should remember to ungroup as soon as you no longer need the groups for your data wrangling. It's good practice. Let's look at what happens when we have our data grouped by one variable. So we're going to group it by sex and we're going to calculate the mean age. So this is mean age years. So when we group it by sex, we get a table and we have no indication of further grouping. Now, if we group it by two variables, then we are going to see something a bit different. We see that the data still remains grouped by the first variable. If we were to switch around sex and neighborhood as we did before, then it would still remain grouped by neighborhood. So this means that when you're going to manipulate your data further, you are going to have results that are grouped by sex, which is maybe going to create problems. And I'm now going to give you an example of persistent grouping and how it's going to create weird behavior downstream. And I'm going to do so using the example of select. So we're grouping by two variables, sex, neighborhood. We're summarizing to get the mean age. And then we want to extract only the mean age variable. So let's do that. We would classically write this. And you agree with me that what would come out is one single column. This is what we expect when we're going to select just the mean age. Well, this is not what happens when you have a grouping. When you have a grouping, what happens is that you're going to still have the sex column selected and this column that you want. But it makes that you have an unusual behavior of select, which is still going to take in into consideration this variable because the data frame itself is grouped by this variable. So if you wanted to avoid this, you would have to use ungroup. So an example of this would now be to add ungroup after you're summarizing. Let's see what it looks like. All right, this is summarizing by the mean age. We get the same thing as before, but here we no longer have an indication that it's grouped by sex. And now, if we take it to you doing select, we'll see that we have no weird behavior. So we ungroup because we're done with what we want. And now we want to select the mean age. And there we go. This is our normal select attitude when the data is not grouped. So this is a very small example. We will see further examples of group by and other verbs later on. And it's just very important that you keep in mind this reasoning that if you are done with your grouped operations, you ungroup. Them. Now we come to a really interesting and great part of this lesson, which is counting rows. As said by Hadley Wickham, which is the chief scientist at our studio, you can do a lot of data science by just counting 
and occasionally dividing. So counting rows, you should really see it as a big tool in your arsenal for getting information from your data. There's different ways that we can count rows. We're gonna see several of them. The first one is going to be to count how many observations there are per group using group by and summarize. So we're gonna count how many individuals there are in each neighborhood group. So we're gonna group by neighborhood. And then we are going to count by doing total equal n. So when we do this, we get a total per neighborhood. And we can see, for example, that the most populated neighborhood is Courier with 236 individuals. Another interesting aspect is that we can calculate another summary statistic at the same time. So let's group again by neighborhood. Let's count the same way we did before, so using n. And at the same time, let's get the mean age per neighborhood. So now we're gonna get a data frame with three columns where we're getting the number of individuals and then the mean age. That way we can see, for example, that our most populated neighborhood has a mean age of almost 29 years old. So now it's your turn to practice. So I'm going to ask you using the occupation variable in the Yao subset to summarize and count the number of occupations as well as to calculate by occupation the mean number of work days missed. You should be careful of any values and I'll see you back in a little bit to see another way of counting rows. Welcome back. Now we're going to see how to count rows that meet a condition. Because the beauty is that we can place a condition within the sum function. So once again, we're going to count by neighborhood. Well, we're going to group by neighborhood first. Then we're going to count those that are under 18. So we're going to do sum age years under 18. We're putting the condition within the sum function and it's going to give us a specific count. And here we see we have all of a sudden our neighborhoods with the count of people that are under 18 within each one. Let's see another example. Now we're going to count the number of people who have a doctorate degree in each neighborhood. So we're going to do sum again and we're going to write highest education equal equal doctorate. So now we're going to get the sum, but only over those that have the value highest education equal to doctorate. So the number of people who have a doctorate in each neighborhood. The neighborhood with the most doctorate respondents is Nukum Kana. And once again, for this pronunciation, if someone wants to let me know in the chat how it is pronounced exactly, I would love that. And now let's see a final example. We're going to look at the treatment combination variable, which is showing the treatments received by people during the COVID-19-like symptoms. Uh, please note that no treatments is an NA value, and we will count the people that have received no treatment. So first, let's have a quick look at what this variable look like, looks like, so that you get familiar with it. So there we go. So we see that we have people who get only one treatment, people who get no treatment, and people who get combinations of treatments. And so now if we group by neighborhood and we count the number of people who have not received a treatment or who have received unknown treatment, then we would do sum with is NA inside of treatment combinations. This way, we only sum over the number of respondents who have NA treatments. So for whom is NA treatments combinations is true. So we see that, for example, there are two neighborhoods where there's a majority of people who have, n where there's more people who have either not received treatment or have unknown treatments, which would be Ekudu and Carrier. So now, it's your turn to practice it, to practice this a bit. 
I'm going to ask you to group the Yao data frame by the respondent's symptoms and to count how many respondents have these symptoms only within the adult respondents. So that is, you're going to use the sum function and you're going to set a condition to only consider adults using, for example, age category three variable. That's a small hint. Your data frame should look like this and you can input it here. And I will see you back in a moment to see a final way of counting rows. This is the last way that you can count rows and it literally has the name count. So we're going to see an example of how to use it using the occupation variable. So we would say count occupation. And when we run this, we see that per occupation, we get an n variable which is created indicating how many people have this occupation within our data set. If you have a look, you would see that it's the same output as for group by occupation and summarize with n. We get exactly the same thing. So it's reducing two lines of code into one single line because that way you get your information even faster as it's a very, very common operation in data analysis. You can also apply count in a nested fashion. So let's count by sex and occupation. And now you have your information by sex and by occupation with the number of respondents who are of that gender with that occupation. I will this time ask you to use the count verb to count rows and to do a count that is by gender, age categories and IgG results. And then you can get onto the second question, which will be counting by age category, as well as number of bedridden days. And now we move to a very important aspect of the group by, and it is that what do you do if you want to include missing combination in your summaries? Because you see, the thing is that when you use group by and summarize on multiple variables, it's going to create the summary statistic for every unique combination in the grouped variables that is actually present in your data. If there's a combination between, for example, as we saw before, between sex and occupation, and that for one occupation, there are no men doing this occupation, then this combination of the two will not be present in your data. So let's see an example of this missing combination by creating a bit of an artificial example. So we're going to create a data set where there are no male children. We will start by dropping those children. So let's leave out all male children. So we're going to type up that TTD. We want age category three equal equal child and sex equal male. And we do not want to keep this. So we are going to embody it in this manner. So this way we have a Yao no male children. There we go. And now if we group by age category three and we summarize by the number of individuals and we group by sex, so by both, then you're going to see a missing combination. You're going to see that for all other age categories, we have female and male with the number of individuals. Same for senior, but for child, we only have female children, 155, but we do not have a row saying child male, zero. And for different manipulations, maybe also for the clarity of your data set, you may want to actually have that information, even if the resulting count is zero. So let's see how you would include these missing combinations. So first of all, for this operation, you need to make sure that your variables are factors. So we would write age category as factor, age category. You've seen how to do this very well in the mutate lesson. And then sex is a factor, 
when we write it like this. Here we convert to factors. Then we're going to group by these two variables. So let's start by age category grouping and then sex. And then we're going to summarize the count. We're going to do n. So there we go. And here we have this by adding here drop is equal to false. So here you have the example of how you are going to add the missing combination right there. So now when we run this, ta-da, it appears right there. So child, male, and there are zero individuals. So in this manner, what's important to remember is you want these two to be now factors. That way, R knows that these are categories, that they should really check all the different combinations of these categories. And then you need to add in your group by this drop is equal to false, meaning we do not drop any categories and we want to see all of them, even if the resulting count is zero. So let's see one more example. This time we will be using a real example, not artificially changed. So we're going to group by sex and highest education. And then we're going to summarize by the mean age. So mean age is equal mean age years. And what we're going to see is that there are one, two, three, four, five, six rows for women and seven rows for men, meaning that there's a missing combination for this, for this um, grouping and it happens to be female other. So you could say maybe not that important to have it, but it's always nice to have the same number of categories. So either here you would do a grouping where you add this drop false argument, or you could also just drop from this, uh, this resulting summarizing data frame the male other. That way you have the same number of categories in both sexes. So this way we're going to see the version where we create the combination because that's what we want to work on. So we are going to do highest education as a factor. And then we are going to put sex as a factor. And we're going to group by, actually let's group by the other way around, that way we see it better, highest education, sex, we set drop is equal to false. And then we summarize for the mean age with the command that you must be getting very familiar with. All right. And there we go. Now, when we look at the resulting combinations, there's seven entries for women, seven entries for men. And for the other females, we get a NAN value for the mean, indicating that this combination is not present in the data set. So, all right, your turn to practice th this out. I'm going to let you calculate the median age with the grouping of neighborhood and age category and gender. Note that we want all possible combinations of these three variables. So you should keep in mind this drop argument. You also need to pay attention that you have two data wrangling imperatives. So it's converting your grouping variables to factors. And then you should also calculate your statistic, the median, while removing any values. There you go. You've seen how you keep missing combinations. Now, why would you want to do so? Let's see a quick example with some plotting. So no panicking. You may never have plotted before. So it will be a very simple code along. Here you see we're doing once again our example with the Yao no male children. This is what we have been doing before. We've ungrouped. Yay. And we're going to now give it into ggplot and we want to plot out the age category graph. So this is our resulting graph. And as you can see, what is very apparent is that for female, we have three columns and for male only two because we're missing the children. And 
So this imbalance of three opposed to two usually is really not okay when you're presenting your graphs. You should have three columns for each one. So how would you remediate, it, remediate this? Well, you would add an empty space indicating that there are zero children in the data set. So when we run our alternate, here you see that because we added our drop false, it takes into consideration also the missing combination. And then when we feed our data wrangled data into ggplot, we get that now we have three different bar plots per different age category with an empty space here for the children that we have artificially removed from the data set. So congratulations for today. You really did a nice job of mastering group by and summarize. And let's take a look at our learning objectives and see how we've attained them. So you can now know how to use summarize to extract summary statistics from your data set. You know how to use group by to group variables by single variables or multiple variables to perform grouped operations. You understand why and how you should ungroup after grouping. Remember, always do it. You understand as well how to use n with group by and summarize to count rows. You understand how to have a condition within sum to get a specific count based on your needed condition. And you know a final way to count rows using the beautiful count, which is a handy function to get quick results for counting rows. Thank you so much for following this lesson. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye. For more resources, visit our website where you can track your progress access interactive quizzes and lesson notes and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.